on the non-voice section of the game, um, a lot of times it was a matter of choosing how we wanted to present something. Uh, so the Japanese might say, very literally translated, um, as an example, uh, the, you can only write a chocobo for a limited amount of time. Um, so when we translate this, we can do that literally exactly as it's stated in the Japanese, or we can couch it in slightly different language, keeping, of course, the central idea and the important information that has to be conveyed there. But uh, noting also at the same time that immersion and realism and staying true to the world are in the English uh, culturally uh, things that are very important. And the way you present that can rub the wrong way if it's not done well. So instead of saying, you can only ride a chocobo for a limited amount of time, we might say chocobos tire easily, so uh, you, you can't ride them all day long. Uh, things like that were something that throughout the game we tried to present things consistently uh, as people in the world would explain them to Vaughn and not uh, directly to the player. Final Fantasy XII was an extremely large project, certainly by any measure. Uh, comparing it to X-2, it had roughly a third more text, and whereas X-2 itself had a third more than FF10, which had come before it. So we were dealing with a very large amount of material to translate. Um, but we made the decision very early on that we wanted to do it uh, with as few people as possible, so just with Alex and myself. And unfortunately, we, we also didn't have control over the schedule, so we made that decision knowing full well that we would have to do more work in less time. But we felt that ultimately this would afford a higher level of quality and consistency throughout the world and what we'd translated. Um, we did, of course, also have the help of our editor in London, Morgan Rushton, to uh, help make sure that what we were working on uh, was all turning out uh, evenly. And, of course, Alex and I checked each other's work as well. Uh, but uh, that decision resulted in a few very late nights, some nights spent sleeping under desks and some nights spent not sleeping at all. But uh, ultimately, hopefully, uh, you'll find all of that work uh, will have been worth it. For the people out there who are fortunate enough to be able to play the game in both Japanese and in English, I think you'll be able to take different things from different versions and appreciate them in their own right. Uh, obviously, the Japanese version uh, started it all, and if it had not been so finely crafted and finely wrought, uh, we could not have done what we did in the English version. Uh, but I hope that people will appreciate the choices we made for changes in when we did actually do the localization and understand that anytime you're starting with one language and going into another, uh, you're going to have to make calls one way or the other. And ultimately, we hope that for the average player who's not going to have experienced the Japanese version, when they sit down to it, if they don't realize at first blush that this is something that ever started in Japanese, then I think we've done a very good job. And at times, that might be difficult for someone who's gotten used to the Japanese version, hearing Fran's voice, for example, suddenly being very different. Um, but understanding where we're coming from and where we're trying to go with that, I think uh, you might be able to appreciate it in a different light. Final Fantasy has played a big part in my own life personally. Um, from the time I was a kid, I played the first Final Fantasy on the Nintendo. And it's a large part of why I decided to study Japanese. And so it has a lot of very special meaning to me. Um, I think it's also very interesting how, even after all these years, the series is able to keep itself fresh and reinvent itself. Uh, and I think a lot of that is because you do have different teams and different people coming and going and working on it and bringing new things to it. But it also does keep uh, a certain soul and heart to it. Um, the story has always been, even, even looking back at Final Fantasy I, though certainly compared to today's games, uh, the story is simple. For the time, it was, it was truly epic. And I think if there's anything that up to this day that you think of when you think of Final Fantasy, it's, it's definitely epic stories. And Final Fantasy XII does not disappoint on that count.